guys, it's Ryan Ralph, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm doing full screen. Um, I usually don't do this. Um, I just decided that I want to talk about something instead of like show gameplay. So what I want to talk about, obviously you already know, because that's why you're here. Um, that would be my guess, is the Nintendo Switch. I want to give you my thoughts and my personal opinion and thoughts on the console. So whatever I tell you, whatever I say, please just remember to take that with um, with a grain of salt, because that's how I feel. Um, you may not feel this way. In fact, um, even though we just got all this information today, um, I have not seen any negative videos on it. I know that there will be, and I know already a few people like Re Review Tech USA, for one, is going to completely feel. At least my guess is probably feel the same way I do. Because Nintendo has been digging their own hole for a long time now. And um, I just feel that this kind of puts them even farther in that hole. So let's start with the name. Let's go ahead and start this. And we're going to start with the name. The name... The reason why the Wii U didn't sell very well last time is because of the name. Most parents and most people... When they looked at the Wii U, they, you know, people who aren't gamers who are buying this for their kids or whatever, most likely for their kids, they saw the Wii U in the stores and they're like, oh, what, what's the Wii U? It has the word Wii in it and then U. So to them, it sounded like it was an accessory for the Wii. And the Wii's been dead and, you know, so they just didn't buy it. And that's one of the main reasons why that console was not getting purchased and did not have great sales is because, for one, the name was absolutely horrible. For two, they did not advertise it. They didn't push it. They didn't really have any commercials for it. Their advertising was extremely poor. And the name, and when you put those two together, that's the sole reason for it being such um, a poor uh, sold console as it is right now. So the Nintendo Switch, that doesn't have a ring to it like the Nintendo GameCube or the N64 or the 3DS XL, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't have a very good ring to it. The Nintendo Switch, again, it sounds like it's going to be something that's like an accessory for the Wii, or the Wii U, and it, it, it just doesn't sound, I mean, I understand why I, the, the name makes sense to me in the fact of, like, what the console is, but again, they're trying to go for the, like, the full audience, they're not going for they, they were, Nintendo has already said that we're not going after one demographic. We're going for like the full demographic of gamers. And um, the name is not going to help them do that whatsoever. Um, the hardcore gamers aren't going to want this. Um, most adults don't want handheld systems. Um, we're going to get into that. I know it's not complete handheld, but we're going to get into that. But I'm just saying, most adults do not want a handheld system, right? I mean, kids are where handheld systems make sense, not so much adults. And, you know, there are hardcore fanboys out there who buy handheld systems from Sony and Nintendo who are adults. I get that. Um, I totally get that. There's always exceptions. But I'm just saying the majority of adults do not want a handheld console. So, what is it? Well, it's basically like a hybrid of the Wii U controller. It's a tablet that you can play the games on the tablet. And it's also a console. But the console is actually the tablet itself, unlike with the Wii U. You had the console and the tablet controller, and the console ran the games um, on the tablet, and so you had to be within range of the console because the console was still rendering the games. This is the console is basically built into the tablet tablet itself, and in order to hook it up to your TV, you have a dock that's hooked up to your TV via HDMI, and you plug the tablet into the dock, and off you go and this is what it looks like this is the Nintendo switch and as you can see it's a tablet with detachable controllers so you can take the controllers off if you just wanted to watch a movie or Netflix or something on it so it isn't so bulky or you could also probably there will probably be like um, my guess is there'll be like mobile type games that you can play on the tablet with the touch screen and stuff I don't know if it's touch screen I haven't seen anything um, I, that I, I've read some stuff, but I didn't see anything that specifically said it was, but it probably is. Um, but yeah, it's cool that you can take the controllers off the side. But the thing is, again, 
that isn't anything new. That's not innovating. We have tablets that we can buy controllers for that attach and slide onto it just like that. And we can take them on or off. And that already exists. Now, what a lot of people are saying is, oh, it's an innovation. It's so great. A lot of reviewers are saying, oh, it's amazing. And, and they have taken a giant step forward and blah, blah, blah. And eh, wrong. I totally, totally, totally disagree with that. And here's why. Like I said, there's thousands of tablets that you can buy. There's thousands of gaming tablets that you can buy. Now, not thousands, but hundreds. You guys get the point. I'm exaggerating. So uh, deal with it. So there's all sorts of tons of stuff like this that you can get, and everyone's like, "Yeah, but you can't dock it and and play on your and um, play on your TV." Uh, yeah, you can. Have you guys ever heard of the Nvidia Shield? Well, the Nvidia Shield you is a gaming portable gaming system like this, although it doesn't have detachable controllers, but it's essentially a glor glorified tablet with controllers attached to the side that are non-removable, and you can hook it up to your TV via HDMI and hook a wireless controller up to it and play it that way. So you can play the same AAA games out of the house, outside of the house on this tablet, and then you can bring it home and you can continue playing them. That's what people are saying is the innovation here, is that you can take the big AAA games, not crappy mobile games, uh, like actual real games like Assassin's Creed or, um, or uh, Skyrim or whatever the case may be, take it out with you, play those AAA games on the, the device, and then bring it home and continue that same game save on your TV. But again, that's not an innovation. It is not an innovation. I repeat, it is not an innovation. The NVIDIA Shield was the innovation for that. They were the first ones to do that. They, for some reason, did not get the praise and did not get the award for that innovation. I don't know why, but they didn't, and yet they were the first people to do it. This is just basically a mix of their Wii U controller and um, a console. And it's basically the same thing as the NVIDIA Shield. It's just made by Nintendo. I don't really see it being anything good. I, I mean, yeah, it's cool. I'm not knocking it. I'm not saying it's bad. But what I mean by when I say I don't see it being anything good is I don't see it as something that... I just don't see it as something that's going to, tell, to take Nintendo out of the the hole that they've dug themselves in with the Wii U. It's not enough. It's not innovative. It's you know you're doing something that something on the market can already do. The only thing is instead of having to set it on the table, plug in a plug the other end of the HDMI cable into the device, and then hook a wireless controller up to it, you just dock it, turn on the TV, grab your controller. It's a little less involved but not really um, it's pretty much the same thing and I just don't understand now as far as the hardware goes we're gonna get into the hardware now they haven't released all the specs like they haven't said the type of memory or the hard drive space or how much uh, space you can put on it with uh, added SD cards or if that's even capable or possible which I'm sure it will be but they haven't said any real detailed specs what they have said here is that um, they have explained that they have told, told us the CPU and the GPU that it's going to be using. Now, NVIDIA, again, we're going back to NVIDIA and their, um, their uh, Shield console. It's going to be using a similar setup, except it's a custom in, uh, uh, NVIDIA Tegra chip. It's not the Tegra 1 like in the Shield. It's actually a custom one that, that NVIDIA is designing solely for this system. Now, apparently, from what Nintendo says, is that they say that the GPU now let me explain the Tegra the Nvidia Tegra is a two chip it's like an APU it's like an AMD APU it's two chips in one it has a CPU and a GPU um, basically being like an APU and like the in, in the consoles and stuff except it's a mobile chip it's designed to be put in phones and tablets and things like that so it was kind of Nvidia's way of bringing uh, um, high-powered games to mo to the mobile world and allowing it's basically what we're going to be having our phones in the future we're gonna have NVIDIA Tegra chips in the future that will allow us to play let's say I don't know Doom on our 7 inch tablet in full 60 FPS at full settings like you would on a console or a PC and it'll be the same it'll still be a mobile experience but the graphics will be just as good the graphic settings will be able to be on max you're gonna get flush FPS and all that good stuff. Um, so, except 
I, I like again, Nintendo has had them make a custom tech, uh, NVIDIA Tegra chip. Now they haven't said how many cores. Um, they haven't said how many. Um, uh, they haven't said um, how many CUDA cores for the GPU there is, and what the specs are on it. Like how what's the what's the uh, megahertz, how fast it is, um, what it compares to. All they said is that the GPU in the Tegra One chip will be based off of the same GPU in the ten in the ten series, like the ten sixty, the ten seventy. And the 1080, which is NVIDIA's newest lineup of GPUs, they said it will feature uh, the same architecture as those GPUs. They didn't say it'll be as powerful as those or, or anything like that, and it won't. Um, most likely, I don't see it being anywhere near as powerful as like a 1060 or 1070, but it'll have the same architecture, so it'll be able to support the same type of uh, uh, technology and run the same type of games uh, that use that newer technology for their game engines and whatnot. Um, and that's all we know right now, guys. That's all we know. Unfortunately, I wish I knew more specs. I really do. I'd like to know how much memory it's going to have. Probably my guess would be, um, my guess would probably be, I'm guessing like three, maybe three to four gigs of memory on the tablet device itself. And then in the dock, there's probably like, hopefully I would imagine there's an extra like gig or two gigs of memory in the dock so that you can use that for, when you're home, you know, you can, you can, the game will automatically adjust the draw distance of a game and make the draw distance longer because you have more memory now that you're docked. And then when you take it out of the dock, it'll turn down the draw distance. Hopefully it's a dynamic setting system so that all the graphic settings change depending on whether it's docked or not docked. Um, that way you can still get a better experience when you dock it, you know, and, and not have to rely on three or four gigs of memory. And that's just my take. Obviously, that's all opinions, and none of that is, you know, that's just me hoping that's what that's that's what it does. Um, personally, I was really excited for the new NX. I was really, really, really excited for it, and I was really hoping that they were going to dig themselves out of that grave by releasing something that was going to be a standalone console that was going to have new online multiplayer. I was hoping that they were going to actually get real servers this time and have real online multiplayer where you could chat and talk with headsets and text and not have this stupid thing where you can only add a friend if you know the friend's name and then you can add them you know in real life and then you know their you can ask them their uh, we or me name or whatever and then the, their Nintendo account name and then add them that way there's no way to like add any other one anyone other than that I was hoping that they were gonna go more multiplayer focus and online focus because that's one thing that's really killing them is you can't you can't you can't voice chat. You don't have a friends list. I mean, you do have a friends list, but you can't. It's not like open social. It's it's like all closed off. And I get that because they're trying to protect the kids from predators and things like that. And that's great. I totally endorse that too. But if you're going to do that, you've got to find a way to do it while still allowing the system to be open end online. So that, you know, I don't have to go to a forum to find some random person's name who wants friends to play with them to add them. I should just be able to do it via the console and there should be voice chat and there should be text messages like you should be able to send messages and, and I think you can actually. I had a Wii U. Um, I sold it after about a year. It's not because I didn't like the console. I love Nintendo. I grew up on Nintendo. Nintendo was the first console I ever played when I was two years old so I don't have anything against Nintendo. I love them and I love what they do. But again, like I said, um, I don't remember, I didn't have any friends on the Wii U on, on the online aspect because I wasn't going to dick around with trying to find any. So I just, I just said whatever. Because really, when you get on the Wii U or the Wii, it, it's like it is not designed to be a social console at all. And I think that's one of the huge aspects they should have added here. I was hoping that it would have the social aspect open up big time, voice communication. All that good stuff. Uh, be able to add whoever you want when you're in a game with them. Just click on add. It'll add them if they accept. Um, I was hoping that it would have hardware that would be up to the capabilities of the new Xbox and the PS4. Um, the new versions of them. You know, hopefully be like up to par with them or even better. But being that this is a mobile system and being that this is NVIDIA or Tegra, I can tell you right now that it's not going to. It's great. That's fine. It's great that it has the architecture of the of the of the 10 series Nvidia GPUs that's great but it's still 
not going to perform anything like the consoles that we have now. It's going to be a glorified, high-performance gaming tablet. It'd be the same thing if you bought the the, uh, the NVIDIA Tegra. Probably a little bit better performance-wise than the Tegra, but not by much. But my point is, if you can, it's the same thing as buying a glorified, like uh, a high-performance gaming tablet versus like just a tablet that's not really meant for gaming and trying to play games on it. It's not going to be that bad. It's going to play games just fine. But, again, it's not what Nintendo needed to get themselves out of the hole. The name is messed up. It's going to confuse people again. It makes absolutely no sense to anybody who doesn't understand gaming and isn't a gamer. It's not going to make sense to them. They're going to lose out completely on that demographic. Uh, Hardware-wise, they're going to lose out on the demographic. It's going to be mostly casuals who are going to want it, or fanboys, and kids who don't understand any of that. And like I said, it just confuses me because here's everybody saying, oh, wow, it's the new NX. Look, it's called the Nintendo Switch. It's so great. It's so cool. It's an innovation. I've watched like four videos, guys, and every single one of them was like, I'm not going to mention who they were, names, channel names, nothing. I'm just going to tell you that I've seen a bunch of videos on this already, and they're all in arms like, ooh, it's, it's like the next innovation. It's so freaking amazing. It's awesome. They're going this big step forward, and it's like, no. No, no. Already been done. Already possible. Not innovating. It's stale. It's nothing new. And when they say in this article that I have in front of me, where they talk about having, um, having being, being that they're glad that they're creating something that can reach the mass market, you know, the hardcore gamers, the casuals, everybody, you can tell that Nintendo has not changed. They're still in the Stone Age. This is not going, and I repeat, this is not going to reach the full demographic. It's not going to. This is going to appeal to kids. And this is a great console for kids. This is a great console for kids. You know, when they have to go to a doctor's appointment and they're busy playing their game, like, no, 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 I don't want to stop playing my game. Well, here, you don't have to. Just pause it, boom, you're ready to go, and you can continue playing. When you get home, you plug it in, and you, st and you, and you start off from where you left off. That's a great kid console. It really is. But for adults, a lesser fanboys of Nintendo, they're not even going to know what the heck this thing is, especially if they're not gamers or just casual gamers. So, I guess I'm going to end it here, guys. I know it was like 17 minutes of me ranting about the same things, but I tried to bring fresh stuff into it and not go around in circles as much as I could, but I, I'm just upset. I'm, I'm really disappointed and upset at Nintendo. I really thought they were going to get themselves out of the hole. I thought this is their chance to redeem themselves. They saw, you know, their, they saw their, um, their mistakes. They're going to correct them. How many times do you need to name a bad a console a bad name before you realize that it's hurting your sales? You know, so whatever. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. That was my take on it. That's my opinion on it. My two cents, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's how I see it. Take it for what you will. Thank you for watching, guys. It means the world to me. Um, if you haven't been to this channel before and you're here just because I'm talking about the NX, I want to take a second and tell you guys that I do a bunch of reviews on games. Mainly what I, well, no. Scratch that. I don't do reviews on games. What I do is I play games for fun and I record it while I play it because I'm a huge gamer, right? And I'm going to be playing the games whether I record them or not. I play tons of games all the time. I love games. I love technology. I'm a PC technician. I build my own computers, all that good stuff. So if you liked what you see here, I don't necessarily know. You have to be into gaming if you're going to like my other content. But go ahead and check it out and see what you like. If you don't like it, that's okay. Give it a thumb down. Give me some negative comments. That's fine with me. I don't care. Um, but just try it out. It's mostly, there's no reviews. Um, I give a little bit of information about the game before it starts, and then we get into the game, and I usually just play a little bit, and that's that. I don't do reviews. I don't do playthroughs. I just play the game for you guys to enjoy it, to watch, and uh, maybe see if, you know, maybe watch 20 minutes of it, see if you want to buy it or not, or whatever. And it's just for your enjoyment. So thank you for watching, guys. As always, I will catch you in the next one.